Opening statements have begun on the trial of the Muslim students who disrupted a speech by the Israeli ambassador at the University of California, Irvine. The students, known as the Irvine Eleven, are accused of repeatedly interrupting Michael Oren when he spoke on campus in February 2010. The Orange County District Attorney argues the students violated Oren's right to free speech by delaying his comments by 20 minutes. But supporters of the Irvine Eleven say the students were practicing their First Amendment rights and should not be criminalized for protesting. A foreign ambassador that's coming to our home and talking to us about these issues, and we can't have a voice at the table, nor can we even voice it at a, at a, in a protest. Since the arrest, the students and the school's Muslim Student Union chapter have been disciplined by university officials. Supporters say that's where the punishment should have ended. Instead, this group of peace organizations says the DA pursued charges because of political motivations. The group says the case is a prime example of selective prosecution and that the students are being punished because the Israeli ambassador was involved. Because they were protesting his, the activities of his country and also because the young men were all Muslim and because perhaps those who behind the prosecution thought that they could get away with it because of the rampant Islamophobia in this country. The Council on American Islamic Relations of Los Angeles says this case has dealt a significant blow to Muslim American students on college campuses across the country. CARE says it prevents the students from feeling like they are fully accepted and allowed to participate in public events. It has that chilling effect, so those who may speak up and speak out against government oppression might instead remain dormant because they're afraid that what they might do next is find themselves in a courtroom having to defend their, their right to free speech. The students from UC Irvine and UC Riverside are on trial for misdemeanor charges of conspiring to disturb a meeting and disturbing a meeting. If convicted, they face up to six months in jail. The Irvine 11 trial is scheduled to last several weeks, with closing arguments expected by September. Vaccinations are beneficial and necessary. Mercury has been used by the medical profession for hundreds of years. And with mercury, we save 50 cents a shot. Those who claim to get sick from vaccines are what we call defective receptacles. But we are compassionate, and we have a variety of pharmaceutical products to suit their needs. In conclusion, get your flu shots. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, September 9th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two of this news bulletin. I'm going to roll into a third one today just because I have a lot to get to. And this is a lot of crap out there is what it is. It's a lot of bullshit. And uh, so I'm going to make sure I cover it today. Um, you just saw a video there. It's uh, similar to a type video that Natural News um, made about vaccines, zombies, and of course the Department of Health and Human Services actually picked up on the zombie idea, which was supposed to be combating what they're doing. So you just let you know that uh, the government, the, the little uh, uh, vaccine uh, Nazis or eugenicists, uh, do pay attention to what these, uh, to what the little people are talking about. Uh, you know, basically they're not believing. They're not. Uh, believing in the whole lie of vaccinations and all that crap. And uh, I have some really good articles to cover here, and uh, let's just get into it. GGNOnline.com is my website, GGNOnline.com. All right, special uh, Libyan unit hunting Gaddafi. So now um, 
It says here Libya's new uh, rulers or terrorists have dedicated a special unit of fighters to track down former leader Gaddafi and uh, satellite images and suspicious phone calls. But uh, basically, they're using the CIA teams. They're also assisting in the manhunt. Um, so, and SAS teams are on the ground. They've been uh, uh, observed by people on the ground reporting that. that SAS is on the ground looking for them, and that's what I said. They'll probably be the ones that'll catch them, and then they'll release them uh, to the NTC so they can make a big spectacle circus show if they do find them. Gaddafi is not a NATO target, says Rasmussen. So NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen said Thursday that the alliance or uh, NATO Nazi powers will maintain its operations in Libya, and the fallen Libyan leader Gaddafi is not a NATO target. Is that right? Is that right? April 16, 2011, Obama demands regime change in Libya. That's right. Uh, allies renew demand for Gaddafi to give up power. March 29, 2011, Gary calls for regime change in Libya. Then, of course, we have Clinton. We can arm the rebels in Libya, but wait a minute, they're terrorists, and now they just got a hold of stockpile weapons. Hmm, shame, shame. I, that's why I said you are the extremists. But uh, I just want to include it here. I thought about this in between uploading videos. Um, actually, uh, it is ex we are extremists because if you look at it from their point of view, the warped point of view of the powers that be, um, these people like Clinton, all these talking heads that represent these globalist uh, cartel or um, uh, satanic faction, uh, basically. Um, yeah, they aren't the extremists because when you're living in f in a world of falsities, untruths, um, where the truth is extreme, then yes, we are extremists. We like the truth. We don't like to be lied to and talked down to like little freaking children. We have little brains or big brains, some of us, and we can think for ourselves. So um, we don't want people like them uh, doing it for us. So yeah, I mean, if you look at it that way, we are the extremists. So they aren't. Uh, and hopefully we can turn this upside down to where um, uh, basically uh, just uttering and sputtering just complete falsities uh, as such as they are, um, that will become extremists. When you start blabbering all this bullshit like Cl Clinton and all these people are doing, um, then uh, you know what? Then you can be noticed as the extremist. That's my point. Turkey set to sign military pact with Egypt after cutting trade ties with Israel. The alliance is not intended as a revenge against Israel. Erdogan's, uh, Erdogan's intention is to extend Turkey's influence to the area it has not reached in the past decades. So uh, go in there and check that out. A well, big deal in Turkey, though. Warships to escort Gaza aid ships. So warships will escort Turkish Gaza bound ships in the future. Turkey's prime minister said, and like I said uh, in a comment board, that could be just politics. Uh, 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 Turkey has, you know, had an empire before. They've been pro-NATO. They have a missile shield there against Iran. They're not really pro-Iran, so I, I wouldn't trust Turkey as far as that goes, but we'll see. Um, it says here, Israel foreign minister floats punishment for Turkey, so now they're going to uh, punish Turkey, um, and it goes in here for what? It says that uh, the recent behavior so the recent behavior, but uh, really it says the comments came as Turkey's prime minister said his country would send warships to escort future aid convoys to Gaza. Okay, I'll keep moving here. Israel embassy wall torn down in Egypt. And then we have U.S. to veto Palestinian bid for statehood at the United Nations. Ex-NASA scientist admits offering secrets to Israel after FBI discover plot during tax probe. Then uh, Iran, NATO missile battery in Turkey not helpful to regional security. Iran foreign ministry blasts the NATO plan for deploying this anti-ballistic missile system in Turkey. Then Iran's uh, Ahmadinejad uh, basically said Turkey is one of our brothers and close friends, but when enemies deploy a missile shield there and admit that this deployment is a measure against Iran, cautious, caution is necessary. And uh, we move on here. Pakistan Prime Minister to visit Iran uh, to close in ties. So big deal right there. Pakistan, Afghanistan, both anti-West now. I think they're really starting to stray. CIA uh, accomplice kept from leaving Pakistan. So a doctor who helped CIA find Osama bin Farty Pants or the, the big ghost bin Laden who's been dead for seven years has been barred from leaving Pakistan. Commission investigated. And it says, of course, we had what? This phony vaccination program, right? And it was all to collect DNA which is really, really evil. EU prepares new Syria sanctions and so no more sanctions for Syria. Saudi is funding armed gangs in Syria. That's right. Syrian authorities uh, say members of an armed gang arrested for carrying out terrorist operations in the country have confessed to receiving
receiving funds from Saudi Arabia. So there you go. And they're also getting uh, um, uh, well equipped with weapons too. So not peaceful protesters once again. Teacher Mohammed quits for Somalia Deputy Prime Minister. Remember I reported on this about how Somalia is going to have this new interim government after the CIA uh, has been there and droning and now they got this stage. It's a real famine. People are starving, but they're being used as political, uh, like I said, political cannon fodder and stuff like that. The poor people in Kenya um, and uh, Somalia. So, and now they have cholera. <laughs> so just like Haiti. So another eugenics operation is what it is. Um, but yeah, so here you go. It says here, a North London school teacher uh, has resigned from his job after unexpectedly being appointed as a deputy prime minister of Somalia. So yeah, the Somalia's needs are really going to be met now. Somalia denies CIA rendition base in Mogadishu. Somalia has dismissed reports that the U.S. runs an underground detention center where CIA helps interrogate terror suspects in the capital. Then Iran has sent 12th aid cargo to Somalia. That's right. They've been uh, 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 sending boatloads of aid to them. Drought donations slow as crisis hits one million more people so donate no i wouldn't donate to that fucking scam china donates 16 million dollars to aid somalia and in venezuela to send 50 tons of food hmm those are all the bad guys though u.s relaxes rules governing food aid to starving somalians are going to let it go to the um al-shabaab and, of course, al-Shabaab didn't want the U.N. That's why they're not accepting their food. But they are accepting all the other ones. Hunger affects millions in the United States, 17.2 million to be uh, uh, more precise. Police clash with protesters in Italy uh, over austerity measures. Power outage hits several U.S. states, including the U.S. and the U.S.-Mexico border in California. Of course, these are what? Shutting down coal plants, the green energy that Obama has been do pushing, shutting down coal. And of course, uh, 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 basically artificial scarcity. Google details and defends its use of electricity. Dis uh, basically, disclose that it has enough electricity to power 2,000 homes. That's enough of uh, uh, Salt Lake City uses. Google emits around 1.5 million tons of CO2 per year, which means absolutely nothing to me because CO2 means absolutely nothing for climate change. Sustainable development's world top issue says Uni uh, United Nations. Of course, that means sustainable development means too many people on the earth. So uh, U.S. sweltered through the hottest summer in 20, uh, 75 years. La Nino is blamed, but if you go on the, uh, uh, the NOAA's website, they say here uh, that neither El Nino or El Nino conditions were present during July of 2011. So what was it? Well, it was scalar weapons. It was harp uh, weapons. So, you know, that goes on. And it's heating the ionosphere, thus heating the climate and the atmosphere so not a scientist but hey one plus one equals two but uh, maybe if you live uh, in, uh, in Orwell's um, little farm, then maybe it doesn't. Heat wave makes July the hottest on record in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Then Da Vinci's sketch recreated on melting Arctic ice to get everybody to look. Oh, look at that. Well, they're doing that on purpose to make easier trade routes. That's speaking of artificial famine, soon super rice to meet daily iron needs of undernourished, uh, basically, uh, victims. Eugenics. They make GMO rice because they don't have enough iron. Well, why don't they have enough iron? Because of the eugenics that's already being carried out on them. Let's not look at the real fucking problems here. Prince Charles warns of six extinction event. Hmm, I wonder why. Prince of Wales, Charles, endorses company, offers homeopathic vaccines for polio, but Bill Gates pushes uh, for vaccine and polio eradication for the 33rd 33 degree president, they both use the same thing, 33 degree president FDR, imported polio virus leaves one infant dead, says it's coming from Pakistan. But look at this, UNICEF polio eradication in Pakistan. I'm not shitting you. Right before, Kenya polio alert issued after case in Najna. And then look at this, Kenya polio vaccination campaigns before. Nigeria governs launch polio vaccination campaign, but good old Nigerian parents refuse because they're smart. It says here, Cuba is set to vaccinate 500,000 children against polio. And of course, Florida had an outbreak too. So as a BMJ had secret financial ties to Merck during publication of articles attacking uh, Wakefield, that's the person that made the link to autism. Earlier this year, journal autism vaccine study was a fraud. Well, was it? Scientists fear MMR linked to autism. Then new research says no link between MMR and autism. So you just like to double think there, guys. Just, you know, if you don't want to trust me, trust your gut or just trust common sense, intuition. Uh, it says stay the hell away from these damn things, man. I mean, come on, just stay away from them. If people in Africa who are, quote, illiterate and poor 
can figure it out, I'm sure you can figure it out too. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. God bless.